What's up everybody? Welcome back to The Bearded Cook. I'm Marcus Hill. Today I got a special treat for myself and for y'all. Today we're doing Snake River Farms Wagyu Beef Ribs. Let's get started. Alright, so nine pounds of Wagyu Beef Ribs. This is a, a three bone plate. You can see right here there's three bones. And you got a thick membrane on the back. Now unlike uh, pork ribs, spare ribs, belly backs, we're not gonna take the membrane off because there's no meat in between the bones. Plus this meat, uh, this membrane, I should say, is used to uh, keep the ribs together because once these things get tender, they're gonna fall apart and you wanna use that to hold it together. Now this came with a layer of fat on the top and I did trim it up some, but I left some because I didn't want to gouge into the meat too much. Uh, but a lot of this will render some of this fat, but you can see this marbling uh, in this meat right here, even on the side, amazing marbling. So this rack came from Snake River Farms. It is a, their meat isn't 100% Wagyu, it's a breed of Angus and Wagyu cattle, uh, but it's, it's, it's amazing and I'm excited to be able to cook it. Uh, so we're gonna have to get this seasoned up. So as usual with beef, I like to use Worcestershire as a, Binder it just kind of adds a little umami to the to the meat and umami is that flavor that You just can't describe when you bite into something that Flavor that you just say mmm This is good. That's what umami is So give it a little meat massage because you know, I like to massage my meat and uh, the next thing we're gonna do is I get some black garlic now this is new to me, I've used it before, but I am going to use this as a binder. It's like fermented garlic. This is a puree, so you can see that. And there's, so I'm gonna take a, uh, about a teaspoon of this, plop it right there on the top. And we're gonna just use that as a binder. We're gonna rub this in. Same process with the Worcestershire, make sure you get the sides. Now, I've never done this with the black garlic before, but, I have heard great things about it. So this is a experiment to see how it turns out. But to me, garlic is good on everything. So it should be good on beef ribs. All right. Now we got that all slathered down. I got three, uh, well, two rubs. And one of them's not really a rub. This is the It's Incredible Rub from Heaven Made Products. To me, this is the best all-purpose seasoning that you can use. I'm gonna use this as a base layer. So because this thing is so thick, we're gonna start on the side. We're just gonna get a light layer. Flip it. Get all sides of it. Even the bottom. And then we're gonna start on the top. Start shaking. And again, we just want a little light layer. We're not gonna go too heavy, but this is just gonna be our base layer. Like so. And then this is um, Black Ops brisket rub from Oak Ridge Farms or Oak Ridge Barbecue. I put it in the shaker because it comes in a, uh, like a little foil package. So it's a little bit easier for me to use the shaking on, so I just do it in the shaker. And I'll include a link to all the seasons I use down there in the description. But same thing. Get the sides first. I'm cooking this on a big green egg today uh, using olive and apple wood. Olive gives a really good flavor to beef. Apple wood gives a really good flavor. It's, it's a milder wood. I like to combine a harder wood with a fruit wood or a softer wood. So we're gonna season this up. Same process, a little bit, little bit heavier coating than the uh, It's Incredible. Okay, this is really our main flavor in right here. This has some good things like shiitake mushrooms, uh, three types of chili powder, uh, or chilies I should say. All right, and we're gonna pat that in. Never rub a rub, pat it in. And then I just got some coarse ground black pepper. Why? Because I really like 
I like peppery beef. So we're just gonna come across the top of that. Shake it, loosen the rub up. Shake it, loosen the rub up. Now I'm not gonna, I'm not so much worried about the sides with the pepper, uh, cause it's really just for building bark. I may put some on the side, but right now I'm not worried about it. And that's it. I'm gonna pat the pepper in. Right now the big green egg is coming up to temperature. So we're gonna let this sweat maybe 15, 20 minutes till we get to 275 degrees, which is where we're cooking at today. Uh, we'll set it and I'll bring y'all back when we're ready to put it on the grill. All right. All right, so we're about 250. We're about 25 degrees away from target temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and get these beef ribs on. We got some smoke going. It's clearing up on me. What I like to see normally is a thin blue smoke. Uh, but what's also important is the smell. You don't want that. You don't want it to smell like charcoal. Right now, I'm smelling that olive and apple wood. It's caught. So we're gonna go ahead and get these beef ribs on. Get this big boy on here. We're just gonna sit right in the middle. And that's it. We're gonna let it sit in here for about, uh, about two hours before I come back. And at that time I'll spritz it. Now I'm gonna spritz with um I'm gonna spritz with some beef stock, maybe uh with some pickle juice added. I like the pickle juice thing. If not, I may just spritz with plain water. Uh, but outside of that, we're gonna let this roll for two hours and We'll start spritzing, spritzing every 45 minutes. And I'll bring y'all back on the first spritz. All right, so it's been right about two hours. You can see we got that olive and applewood smoke going. Now before, when we put it on, uh, it was white. Uh, but now as you can see, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but it's got that thin blue smoke going. That is what you want. If you're billowing thick white smoke uh, out of your grill, that's not a good thing. Open your grill, figure out what's going on. So I got, um, some uh, unsalted beef stock, a little bit of Worcestershire, 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 whatever, this liquid with a W on it. Uh, we're gonna check these out. Now I haven't looked at them at all. So if it's messed up, we're gonna find out it's messed up together. Uh, so if it need a little spritz, I'm gonna spritz it. If not, we're gonna leave it alone. Let it go for another hour. Get in here, let's see what we got. Oh, uh, man. So what I see is awesomeness. Uh, we got some good bark going. It's not set just yet, but it's all right. We got some pool going. Now that's where that uh, that little fatty part was that I didn't trim all the way. So as you can see, it's pulled up a little bit. But I'm gonna spritz this part down here and we'll leave that part alone. Just give it a little spritz. You don't want to soak it. Just want to kind of little fine this a little bit. And that's it. You can see we already got some pullback going. That bone is probably gonna fall out, but hey, we eating this not for competition. And we're gonna close it up and uh, come back. I usually like to spread every four to five minutes to an hour, uh, but we'll just take a look in about 30, 35 minutes. Uh, and if it needs spritz, we'll spritz again. Probably not gonna bring y'all back each and every time for that. Uh, what I will do is bring y'all back when I get ready to wrap. We're gonna wrap in butcher paper today. Uh, so stay tuned. All right, so we've been, uh, been smoking for about five and a half hours. I've spritzed it every 45 minutes, starting at the two hour mark. Uh, so I took a peek at it, I'm not gonna lie. It looks prehistoric. So I want y'all to get in here and take a look. So what we get ready to do now is uh, wrap it in butcher paper. And then after I wrap it in butcher paper, I'm gonna toss it in my pellet grill. It doesn't really matter once you wrap it up where you put it, you can put it on your pellet grill, you can put it back on the grill, or you can put it in the oven. Don't tell nobody you put it in the oven to die hard barbecue people will flog you in a public square. But let's get it, take a peek and uh, show you what we've been working on. That's what we've been working on. So as you can see, it has puffed up considerably. We got amazing 
amazing drawback and the bones. Uh, this left bone over here is like it wants to pop out. I did temp it, we're about 190 degrees, which is higher than what I thought. Uh, but it's not as tender as I want. I want to keep the smoke off of it. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I got some uh, cotton glove liners on uh, with some nitrile gloves. Uh, so we're going to move it over, get it wrapped up. What I like to do before I wrap it, I like to spritz just a little bit more, just to moisten up the surface, just a little bit. You can see that our bark is really nice. It's not coming off. It's almost gelatinous at this point. You see that jiggle? Man, it's gonna be good. It still feels a little tight, not quite as tender as I want it to be. So we're gonna sort go ahead and wrap it up. Keep the smoke off of it. I got two layers of uh, pink butcher paper. We're just gonna do a, one wrap here. I'm not a professional pit master, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And there you go. We got it wrapped around the top. And I got a thermal pin here, uh, not a thermal pin, a thermal works dot. It's a, um, almost like a temperature alarm. I got it set for 204, but I am gonna check it probably every 15 minutes. I don't cook the temperature, I cook the tenderness, uh, but it's, it's kind of good just to have it, just to know where you're at. So I'm gonna set that right there. And you wanna find the thickest part of these beef ribs, which is right here in the center. I'm gonna take this probe, go in at an angle. All right there, make sure you don't hit bone. And uh, I'll bring y'all back when we're done. Now when we're done, uh, it does have to rest for about an hour. Uh, the rest is the most important part. So the next time you'll see this is me taking it off. And uh, after the rest, we'll cut into them, let you see it. Stay tuned. All right, everybody. So we are done with the cook. But before we cut into it, I'm going to give a little recap about what we did. Uh, we had a nine pound we started with a nine pound slab of snake river farms wagyu beef ribs beautiful marbling just a beautiful cut of meat all right we trimmed off the top layer of fat left a little bit on top uh we got to slap it down with some Worcestershire sauce whoosh whoosh sauce and a little black garlic uh puree rubbed it down real good season it with heaven made products it's incredible rub and oak ridge barbecue black ops brisket rub add a little coarse black pepper on top and we put it on a big green egg at 275 degrees and we spritzed every 45 minutes after the two hour mark uh, with some unsalted beef stock and some Worcestershire sauce uh, we wrapped with butcher paper at about the five five and a half hour mark threw it on the pellet grill at 300 degrees uh, until it reached temperature or tenderness uh, that just so happened to be about 200 degrees internal so everybody's been waiting everybody want to see what it looks like so we get ready to cut into it let's see all right so as you can see we built a beautiful beautiful bark on the outside you see how gelatinous that is the jiggle we got going uh after this was cooked i actually placed it into the oven and let it hold about an hour and a half at 170 degrees uh just to let it rest but we get ready to cut into it now and uh see what we got so i'm gonna have to figure out a good spot here so we're just gonna cut i think this bone here is gonna fall off but let me just go ahead and go for it i'm gonna cut right there oh man it's cut like butter so let me turn that around Oh man, y'all see that? Juicy, look at that. All that moisture in there. I hate when people squeeze their meat, so I'm not gonna squeeze it, but just gelatinous. I'm gonna cut off this other bone here. There, look at that. One bone. And there you guys have it. Six hours later, smoked Wagyu beef ribs from Snake River Farms.
If you guys like what you see and you enjoy the cook, consider subscribing. Uh, please leave me a thumbs up. It helps with the YouTube algorithms and whatnot. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'm trying to release videos every two weeks. Uh, so stay tuned for the pictures at the end. Thank you for watching. Peace.